15 years ago today was 9-11. And uh, I remember, I'm sure everyone else does too, remember where they were. I was teaching at Texas A&M and I just stepped out of the beginning of the class and they had TVs on and I saw the result of the first plane crash and was watching in amazement as the second one hit. And I just, you know, the first one you think, well, maybe a plane got off course and maybe a pilot had a heart attack and they couldn't correct the plane, lots of things. But after the second one, you knew it wasn't an accident. And our country has suffered horrific things. But you know what? We are still a nation under God. We are still a nation under God. And I remembered what our country was like immediately following that. There was a coming together of our country like never before. And I'm praying that we still have that cohesiveness going into this election. Right now it doesn't look like it, but I tell you what, you know what? The Bible says that God puts into office who He wants. I just hope we can live with what He wants. Amen? Hope we can. Hope we can. I want to talk today about three deadly words, things that I never want to hear out of anyone's voice here. We're going to read from, from the book of Jeremiah, and I just want you to be aware of the fact Jeremiah was a, a great prophet. He was one of the youngest ones. Matter of fact, he was only 33 when he wrote this book. And that's really young when you think about in age of the Bible, when you think about Methuselah living so long and all the people around that living so long. But he wasn't, he wasn't old, and yet he had so much wisdom in what he was saying. It was because God was really speaking through him. So I, I want us to read these first few verses. There's only, there's only a few, so we're going to read them up here. It says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Listen to this. Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. You need to think about that. Before you were ever birthed, God already knew you. So when people say that you need to change, you need to think again about who they are as just human beings. This is God speaking. I formed you. I formed you. And before you came out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then Isaiah said, Ah, oh, Lord, behold, I cannot speak, for I am only a child. Those three words, I'm, I am only, are the three worst words I could hear out of anybody's voice. I'm only. You know what? We just sang about a magnificent God indescribable, who is all-powerful, who formed us out of two small elements, created us, and here we are. I think it's amazing. So when you think that you are only something, I got news for you, you're a whole lot more than what you think. A whole lot more than what you think. He says, he goes on, he says, I cannot speak for I'm only a child. But the Lord said to me, say not, I am a child. For you shall go to all that I send thee, and whosoever I command, you shall speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver thee, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand, and he touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set this day, set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. A lot of pulling down, but there's some building up that goes along with that. And I'll tell you something, there are a lot of people who I think are going to be amazed when they get to heaven to find out who their next door neighbors are. I think on the other hand, there are going to be a lot of people that are wondering why they didn't make it. <laughs> but the whole point is, is that you are not only something, you are a creation of God. And that in itself is something to celebrate. And so when you begin to pull yourself down and make yourself low and small, I got news for you. That's not the way God sees you. God doesn't make just anything. Everything he made, he had made for a reason. And that's the thing we need to remind ourselves. There is a child. I'll put a picture up here. Little boy. Cute. 
cute, cute, cute. His father was unemployed. Matter of fact, his father had, had no formal schooling education at all. His mother, although, was a teacher, and he was born in Michigan. This child only had an IQ of 81. That's relatively low. He was withdrawn from school after three months because he was considered backward. They tried to enroll him again, but they enrolled him late because he had, had scarlet fever and he had a lot of respiratory infections. He was going deaf as a child. Suffered from poor mental health. He was stubborn, aloof, showed little emotion. He liked mechanics, though. He liked mechanical things, which I thought was pretty interesting. He lived in a lot of solitude by himself because he was just different than everybody else, and everybody knew it, and they treated him like that. He grew up, made a couple of strong statements. This is one of them. Opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overall and looks like work. I thought that was pretty clever. Opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overall and looks like work. Here's another one I thought was pretty cool. Many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Ever felt like that? I mean, we work, 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 and we think that we're just right there at that moment. We say, you know what? I've worked too hard, too long. I'm done. This guy's name? Thomas Edison. Well, when you think of Thomas Edison and you think about his beginning, you wouldn't think that he's going to turn out to be like much. You wouldn't think that he ever had a purpose when you look at him so small and so different from everybody else. And, you know, they just kind of wanted to take care of him because he was just going to amount to nothing. And his parents were probably thinking, you know, this is going to be a long lifetime we're going to have to live. And then what are we going to do with him after we're dead? We're going to have to, we're going to, have to assign him to somebody else. And a lot of times, People put these young children into institutions because they just didn't know what to do for them. Didn't know what to do for them. But I thought it was pretty amazing. Someone that no one thought anything of turned out to be someone that brought us light. <laughs> pretty, pretty strong. There's this little girl. I think she's, she's cute. Doesn't she look cute? Sitting there, all little, little cut across the top. Her father was an alcoholic. She spent most of her childhood sick, bedridden, often hospital hospitalized. She was erratic and withdrawn. She bit her nails till they bled, till they just bled. She had numerous phobias when she grew up. She was afraid of everything. She had to wear a back brace because her spine was, had a defect in it. She needed constant attention. I know some people like that. No one here, of course. She was a daydreamer. She had no vocational insights at all. She had no idea about what she ever wanted to do, nothing. She was kind of pretty when she grew up, but still she had all these problems. And she did have one aspiration in life. She wanted to help older people. She wanted to help the elderly. She wanted to help the poor. She felt like that was something that she could manage to do. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent was a statement she made. I think that's pretty, I think that's pretty amazing, isn't it? No one should make you feel small because who they think you are when we have to remember that we're not only something. We are a divine creation of God that placed his hands on us, has spoken into our lives and given us the very spirit that he has. We're not only something, we are something. This woman became a national speaker on, tele on radio. She made some statements which I thought were pretty cool. She said, great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events. Well, then small minds discuss people. Eleanor Roosevelt. So, you know, no matter how your beginning is, that is not always going to be your end. 
And you know what? We're not done yet. You know, I believe that we're here because we have a purpose. And I believe that we're still here because we still yet have purpose. So that means that God is obviously not done with us yet, and there's still a lot of learning that's going on right now. The more we recognize who God is and what He is and how big He is, is amazing to me. So we really do have an understanding that, you know what, God's got a lot to do. But when you think about these two people, I don't think either one of them would have been voted to have had any kind of success at all. Had you started and looked at them when they were small, you would never say, she was going to amount to something, or he was going to amount to something, looking at who they were. But see, God's not done with us. So I can't just say, well, I'm only, because I'm only where I'm at right now, but I'm coming into what God has for me, I believe. Geologists tell us that there's only 3% of fresh water on the surface of the earth. Only 3% that 97% of all the fresh water are held in underground reservoirs that we never see. I think it's the same with people. I think only what we see is 3% of what we really have a potential of becoming. And I think a lot of it is just left undiscovered and never really pushed to the place where it could come out and be seen. So how do we tap into all that? First off, we gotta remember We'll take a look at this guy in just a moment. We have to remember that, you know what? We're not only something, but we need to remember what God says and what God says about us. And when we remind ourselves, he says that we are the apple of his eye. This guy right here, New York attorney, 85 years old. He had retired after 60 years of being an attorney. 60 years. Oh, those are pretty incredible. There's a lady in New York. Her husband was 71. He was struck and killed by a drunken police officer off duty in a patrol car. She argued and de that she had been deprived of her husband's future earnings, and they tried to settle this thing out of court with just a few measly thousands of dollars. Because he's, after all, he's 71 years old. How much longer could he have lived? And how much more, the city kept arguing, how much more could he have really made? He's 71. Really? 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 So what happened was, they didn't realize that they had come up against this guy. When in court, he made a statement. He said, you know what? He argued with them and argued with them that, you know, I'm 85. And in the last 14 years of my career, he talked about the millions of dollars that he had billed in the last 15 years. And the, the city, when they took it to court, thought that they were going to win. Well, the case was lost by the city, and the city ended up paying them over $3 million for the rest of his life. This guy, I mean, nobody's ever heard of him, but I mean, he grew up just as a normal little kid grew up to be one of the best attorneys in New York City. Won more cases than so many other groups of attorneys because he just wasn't willing to give up. Retired, came back for this case because this little lady didn't have any money. Wanted to take care of her. I like genies. Don't you? Let's see this one. Three guys found a little lamp in the sand on the beach. They brought it up and began to rub on that, and poof, a genie popped out. He says, I'll give you three wishes. He says, there's three of us, let's all get a wish. And the first one says, oh, let me think, let me think, let me think. I wanna be 10 times smarter than I am right now. And the genie said, poof, 10 times smarter. And the guy, not to be outdone by him, said, well, I want to be a hundred times smarter. And he said, poof, you've got it. And the other said, I want to be a thousand times smarter. And he said, poof, you're a woman. <laughs> you know what? You, you, there's something to say about that. You know, there's something to say about that. The twoest 
Two of the highest IQs ever recorded are by two women. One, you're not going to believe this, Sharon Stone. She has an IQ of 156, way up there. She's actually 12th out of all of the IQ tests given, 12th, a woman. I thought it was pretty interesting. You know, at 15 years old, she had been given a full scholarship to the University of Edinburgh in Pennsylvania at 15. She was already going to school. I don't think of that when I think of Sharon Stone. But it's interesting to know. There's another girl. Her name is Judith P-O-L-G-A-R, Polgar, I guess. She has an IQ of 170. And you might know the name Gary Gaspara, who was the number one chess player in the world, had been number one until 2002 when she beat him. Made all kinds of news. Because you see, even, maybe it's because I have daughters. Maybe it's because I have daughters. And I've told them from day one, never to ever sit second to any man. Never feel like you have to do that. From the moment I said that, they never listened to me anymore, but it was okay. <laughs> A little girl asked God, are little boys really better than little girls? And she briefly paused and she said, now I know you are one, but please be fair. <laughs> she thought, you know, maybe God could be a woman. Please be fair. A man and a woman were dating, and he said to her, you know, you've got so many pretty plants here. She, he says, I bet you speak to your plants. I bet you talk to your plants. And she said, yes, I spend a lot of my time talking to plants. I talk to my computer plant in Chicago. I talk to my textile plant in North Carolina. I have lots of plants. Women and guys, we're not only. We're not only. We shouldn't ever think of ourselves as being only something. I'm only a dentist. No, you're a dad. You're a great dad. You know? He gets to see his granddaughter here soon. Grandson. Grandson. Oh, you already know. Grandson. He's going to get to hold that grandson before his former wife gets to. Yes, there is a God. So, all kinds of things going on. I know, you just can't stand it, can you? I know, I, I, I've seen it. Little girl was molding clay, and she made this beautiful little sculpture, and the teacher said, what's that? And she said, oh, it's a little angel. And she said, you know what, it looks like an angel. So the little girl had no more made this than she rolled it up and smashed it all and rolled it into a ball. She said, what are you doing? What happened to your beautiful angel? She's hiding. We have to realize that we're more than just something. Because you see, the God that I know, faith is knowing. It is knowing what? That God calls things that be not as though they were. He already has said, you are the apple of my eye. You have more to you than you can possibly imagine. Don't think that just because your age limits you, in most cases, people think that it does. You know, we were talking about age this morning, and you know what? We were, we were thinking about, well, we're not going to do like that. You know, and I, I, I remember my father-in-law was a runner, and he used to run, 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 run. And we were in meetings that he would run, he would just walk fast. Everywhere he went, he would just walk fast. But I saw him decline and I never want to decline. I never want to decline. I'm going to keep myself going. People think, well, you know what? You're near retirement, aren't you? I said, yeah, but you know what? There's a whole lot left behind that. A whole lot left behind that. I'm just now getting to where I enjoy life. This last week, it took me, took me three days to stop. Actually, it did. 
Because you pick up a pace and you get going and you get going and I'm working and working and working and suddenly, you know, you're not working and you, you still want to do things. You still want to be active and your mind is still going and it's still thinking, what can I do, what can I do, what can I do? It took me three days to stop. So I really only had three days of vacation. But I enjoyed every one of them, I'll tell you. Every one of them. Every one of them. But take a look at these scriptures. David said, keep me as, keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. And if there was someone that ever missed it, that could possibly have ever missed it more than any other person on earth, it was David. He missed it so many times and he kept missing it. He, he, look, you'd think that he would learn from his mistakes. But you know what? God doesn't care how many mistakes or how many failures or how many times we fall. He just wants us to get up and keep going. He just wants us to keep going. Look at this one in Zechariah. For this is what the Lord Almighty says. After the glorious one has sent me against the nations that have plundered you, for whoever touches you touches the apple of his eye. Touches the apple of his eye. I like this one in Genesis. He replied, Lord, before whom I have walked faithfully will send his angel with you and make your journey a success. Everything you do, you should realize that God has set you in front of it for a good reason. He says that he will withhold no good thing from them that walk uprightly. No good thing. No good thing. Well, God, I really wanted, I really wanted. It wasn't a good thing for you. It wasn't a good thing for you. Well, but why? But you know, we're just kids, aren't we? Just grown with ages and more rings around the trunk, right? But we've got to remind ourselves, you know what? God really does give us what is best for us, even though we may not agree with him. Psalm 1-3, we all know this one. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither, and whatever they do prospers. Whatever they do. Whatever you should put your hand to do. I am not only a little something. I am not only. I am not only. I'm somebody. God made me that way. Everything we read, God is for us. Everything that we see, God is on our side. God is our shelter. God is uh, the, the one that hovers over us. The Spirit of God just watches over us all the time. He's always doing that. Why do we think that we're just nothing? And why do we let people think to themselves that this class of individual is nothing because they're not like us? Well, I got news for you. We are all the same. And whether we like it or not, God loves everyone the same. That might make you angry. But it will make them angry too to let them know that we're the same as they. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all my innermost being. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not what? All His benefits. Who forgives all. Everybody say all. all. Forgives all my sin and heals what? All my diseases, who redeems my life from the pit and crowns me with love and compassion. I like this. Who satisfies my desires with good things so that, so that my, I forgot to take out your, I made all this personal, so that my youth is renewed like an eagle. You know, I believe that we can have what we say. I believe that we're like God in the fact that he created the world. He created his universe. He created what we live with his words. And I believe we have an awful lot to do with our future too by what we say. So instead of saying, I am only, remember God's words over you. Just remember the fact that he says only good things over you. He reminds you that you've got nothing to worry about because he has gone before you. He will make the crooked way straight and the low places high and the high places low so that we walk on an even keel with him. 
Could there be any better life than that? I don't think so. Don't think so. So let's take a moment. Let's pray. Let's just thank the Lord. You know what? That, that he, does, he does a good job. He does a good job. Amen. Heavenly Father, right now in Jesus' name. Father, I, I thank you that you have given us the mind of Christ. That we're not diminished. Matter of fact, the more we confess it, the more we have it. Father, the more we want, all we have to do is put our hands to more. Because you said that you would bless whatever we put our hands to. Father, every person here today is your child. Every person here you love just the same. We've all got talents. We just need to use them. Some have developed them more than others. But Father, we have been given great gifts. We've been given a great Heavenly Father. We couldn't have picked one better. But Father God, we love you today. And we worship you. And we thank you this morning that there is no difference between male or female. That we are all one in you. So Heavenly Father, we love you this morning and we do give thanks today. We give you all the praise and all the glory for it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. God is good. God is good. God is good. So how many people are going to go to lunch with us at El Phoenix? How many people are going to go to lunch with us?